Twitch has been hacked. Everybody has been leaked. And the internet is in, you know, one of, one of those moods. Hey, internet. So while I was working on a thing, I got a notification from Twitch. Or not from Twitch, but my password manager that told me that Twitch had been hacked. So then I went in, changed my password, and you should too. And if you're a streamer, maybe re-authenticate your stream key. Just do those things. It might be a good idea. But Twitch was hacked, and there was a lot of things that were released from this hack, and it was posted over on everyone's favorite message board, 4chan, um, in which 4chan uh, called Twitch a cesspool, to which is a hilarious statement made. We live in a society. <laughs> Anyway, all this information is out there. You can go find it if you go looking for it. But the big thing that people's focused on, at least on the public internet side, uh, was how much Twitch streamers and everybody was making on the internet. Uh, Twitch is also open source now because all of their code was leaked. Um, so that's nice if you want to make your own Twitch with all your billions of dollars that you don't have. Uh, but if you want to go do that, you could. Don't do that. You will probably get sued into oblivion. Man, do people have opinions on how much people are making. Um, and, and I want to, you know, squash some dreams today and, and kind of uh, get people to reevaluate reality for a second. Now, it shouldn't be a surprise that a lot of these people make so much money. They provide a lot of entertainment. Some of them basically just providing it for free. Uh, there's a lot of people that are watching these streamers and thus it's not surprising that some of them make millions of dollars. The entertainment industry is very weird, right? Because it's very a, a, an industry of uh, make a lot of money or make zero money, right? There is like very small amounts of in between. And, and I can speak from experience having both done the film stuff and the game stuff and the YouTube stuff, uh, mainly because it, it's so variable how much money you make. But these guys over on Twitch are making fat stacks. But again, these are only like the top 1% of the 1% of everybody that's on Twitch. All right, so let's get to the dream crushing right now, right? Not everybody that gets into this space immediately makes millions and millions of dollars and is able to drop out of whatever they're doing and then and, and just go play Fortnite all day 100% of the time, okay? And, and honestly, I don't know if I'd ever want to be one of these people that has all these millions of dollars playing a video game, but then like, I don't know, I'm just like, what do you do with it? Like, if I make that much money, I want to put it back into stuff, but like, to be a great streamer, there's like a level that you need to cross and then the gains you get from improving your stream a little bit, like a new camera and like a stream deck are so minimal, but like, like what do you do with the rest of the money aside from buy a mansion? I mean, not that I'd want all that space because it would be kind of quiet and, and too big, but you know, I'm Mr. Minimalist, man, so. But yeah, I understand that this is a dream that a lot of people want these days. It's a dream I've wanted for myself to be doing this full time, to make this my career. Full disclosure, this month I'm only about making about $60 on Twitch, a little bit more than that. I tweeted about it. I don't remember. I don't have my statistics up in front of me right now. Um, and also $20 of that is stuff that I donated to myself so I got more subs on Twitch to maybe encourage people in the future to continue subbing and, and being a part of the community that I'm growing on Twitch. So really, I've, I've, I've made 40 and spent 20, which isn't that bad, but eh. And then I've also been very open about with how much I make on YouTube and how it's not a livable income, which is why I'm still both in school and working full time on top of the channel. So a uh, little bit of background, I live in New York. The cost of living in New York is extremely high and is continuing to rise and the you know quality of life isn't necessarily getting any better. Um, I earned about $22,000 last year making me videos on YouTube. Uh, I would say that I worked an average amount of hours for a job, especially if we're talking about jobs and entertainment. Um, and, and this year I'll probably make a little less than that, maybe around the same amount because Patreon and Twitch are helping to offset the lost money from a channel that's going under a little bit. Um, so those are what I'm making, and I really don't see why it's such a problem for so many people to talk about the money they make. However, I understand that making millions of dollars would probably paint a target on your back, so you don't want to say how much you make. So why am I telling you how much I make? What is the point of doing this, right? Well. Uh, it's really to get you to reevaluate what exactly it is that you're doing on the internet if you're someone who makes content, right? Well, the reason I bring this up is because of this, right? It's, it's great that so many people want to do this as a job, and it's a great job. 
but I think people get the false impression that you do nothing and you instantly make millions of dollars. And that is not the case. It is kind of a gold rush to try and become a millionaire via the internet. TikTok, YouTube, and OnlyFans seem to be probably the biggest ones right now for doing that. Uh, maybe Twitch as well, right? But people are rushing to these things without realizing one, how hard it is, and then two, how detrimental it can be to your mental health. I'm sure we've all seen the gimmick accounts on Twitter retweeting some OnlyFans chick, only for her to get inundated with insults and her absolutely breaking down at the fact that some guy on the internet called her fat, even though she has no idea who this man is and really shouldn't care what his opinion is either. Not to say that, you know, people should be cool with getting insulted on the internet, but just that you gotta realize that there are real negatives that come with doing this job, and I don't think people realize any of those things. On top of that, the money that those guys are making over on Twitch and the massive amounts that they're making don't necessarily mean that you will make that much either. In the space of commentary, some people make a lot of money. They make really good money. I know because I've asked them how much they make, and we have conversations about the money that we make in private. And yes, you can make a lot, but this isn't a field in particular with commentary that is good for making long-term, stable, successful income. Technically, if you want to make the most money over here on YouTube, what you should be doing is actually deciding to make real estate videos 24-7, talking about mansions or architecture or something that has a high income base level to begin with. Want to make a lot of money? Make a channel talking about something related to people that have a lot of money. That's why finance channels make so much money. It's why if you wanna make a lot of money on YouTube, you talk about money. I should also state that all of these revenue incomes and streams and all that stuff fluctuate month to month, which is something people don't actually notice. For example, during the time period coming up towards Christmas, companies are looking to advertise towards parents, kids, and different family members that are looking to buy products for their loved ones. So advertising goes up that month. It means you make a really good Christmas bonus in January because you get paid the month after for the month that you're doing, right? So let's say I have a really good December. I'm gonna get a really great December check in January of the next year. Um, so that's, that's basically how that works. However, when January comes around, nobody has money for anything anymore, which means the companies aren't advertising for anything, which means you make less money because you get garbage ads. And overall, you're not gonna make a lot of money in between the months of January, February, March, up until April when the weather starts getting warmer and they start planning for summer vacations and different ads related to things like that. Income can also fluctuate on a number of different things, including how successful your channel is, whether or not you get demonetized, or whether or not you get put in the corner where you're not allowed to do anything or you're in trouble. For example, I've had a loss in revenue from getting this community guideline strike. I'm not saying that there's any correlation between the two. I'm just saying I'm looking at what happened to me. Anecdotally, getting the community guideline strike was very bad for the health of my channel and myself. And this is the same for OnlyFans, right? For example, uh, we, we got a lot of people that are making a lot of great money on there and that's cool for them. But I, I think people are getting into that job thinking it's easy that I, I could just put out a picture of my boobies or, or, or cock, men can do it too, and that you just get money and that there's no repercussions whatsoever. In fact, it's incredibly hard to build that from the ground up without having some secondary means of making income or having another means of promoting yourself as a brand. There's a reason that a lot of these uh, booby Twitch streamers on Twitch also happen to have OnlyFans. They actually are funneling their audience through Twitch to OnlyFans. It's a really interesting idea that I've seen carried over between pretty much every other social media brand. I do it here. I promoted my Twitch. It's the same thing except um, porn, so you know. Basically what I'm saying is don't think you're just going to instantly become an OnlyFans hit celebrity uh, just because you're promoting your OnlyFans to your family on your 2,000 follower Instagram account. Um, I don't know what your Uncle Jules is doing buying your Instagram account, or uh, not Instagram account, your OnlyFans account, what am I saying? But hey man, if you want to have your uncle look at you, go right ahead, man. I'm not gonna stop you. So I, I don't really care about Twitch streamers making all this money because Having worked in entertainment and even working in like the mainstream stuff, like the movies and all that, uh, it's crazy how like a PA works the same amount of hours or more than some of the above the line workers and makes $15 an hour 
And then the other guy gets like all these other things. And it's it's nepotism, right? It's nepotism in that field. And, and, and luckily we have cold hard statistics over here on the internet, which I'd much prefer over the nepotism of the of the entertainment industry. But, uh, you know, it's, it's not surprising to me that there's so much money to be made here, right? I think people are, are often surprised by the numbers uh, of, of the cost of movies like Avengers or, or something like that. It, it's not surprising to me when, when you think about all the things that are involved in that and, and how much is gained from doing something like that. I, I think a lot of people almost feel guilty about being a Twitch. I know I know people that are that are guilty about making a lot of money, like coming from, like I know people from working class backgrounds that are now very successful internet celebrities and you know that's great for them but uh, you know they now it, it's they carry this like guilt because of their upbringing and, and their own personal philosophies that they should feel guilty for getting successful and, and you know like i i think you might want to be more grateful than than guilty you know you you come from this struggle and you deal with this right and now you're there and now you can afford to give the people you love in your life the retirement they deserve. You can afford to give back for the care that was given to you. You can do things that you couldn't do before, right? Those are good things, right? You shouldn't feel bad about that. And, and listen, guys, I'll tell you right now, um, I'm not someone to go out and buy a bunch of ridiculous shit. Uh, if all of a sudden I start making millions of dollars doing this YouTube crap, uh, I'll, get, I'll get a new camera. Maybe I'll fund my uh, own feature film. Uh, yeah, you know what? I'll get a Tesla and, um, I don't think I'll get a mansion. I'm not, I'm not really big into having a lot of shit kind of deal. Hey man, I, I fucking, I am so fucking tired of being broke. It's getting really, it's a struggle. Holy shit, guys. If I told you the shit that happens to me, I literally pay a poverty tax because I don't have a car, guys. Okay. Have you, have you taken a cab in a place where nothing's close to each other? I pay, it cost me $50, $50 every day to get to class. I had to take a cab to class. And then of course I tipped them. So it's $55. Fuck me, man. Ugh. Point is, if I all of a sudden came into this money, I would be very grateful. Um, but hey man, I made the money. I'm not gonna feel like some, like I'm not gonna get all butthurt that I'm, that I'm rich now, okay? I, it's not gonna happen. I really don't think most of these Twitch streamers should be like, I am so sorry, I'm so sorry. Or, or, or try and like playing into it into a way to like, I don't make a political statement. I don't, I don't get that at all. And I don't want to hang out around those kind of people. I, my, my kind of thing is as long as you're a genuine person and, and you're grateful for what you have and, and, and where you're at now, and you know, you understand where you came from and all that shit. As long as you're just a genuine fucking person, I don't think there's a problem with you making money or, or being successful. There's no, there shouldn't be a rule against that. For some reason, Zoomers and millennials get on Twitter and they think, yeah, I really like having to share a four bedroom fucking studio apartment with six roommates <laughs> and working my shitty job. <laughs> Listen, man, if you got the opportunity to get out of there, I know you would take it too. Like, like the Twitch streamers that aren't genuine, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't appreciate that. But for those that are, I don't really have a problem with them making money. I'm much more annoyed by people that say one thing in public and do another thing in private. You know, I've been in, I've been doing this long enough that I've seen that and it's frustrating and annoying. Um, so I, I don't like those people. I'm not gonna shed a tear over them, but I know plenty of people that are successful, genuine, beautiful, amazing people. And I, I don't want them to feel guilty for the success they have and and if you're someone who's working hard or you're going to med school so that way you can make a shit ton of money and and save lives or do whatever you know is it, you fucking worked for it man you fucking work for it. it unless you're one of those people that were just given everything then i you know i'm not gonna give a shit if you get hit by a car uh, anyway guys with that being said i'm streaming on twitch uh just a little talky talk video today uh so um Go support my cause to be a millionaire. <laughs> Let people go uh, if they like had a meltdown when she went to collect homework. So what happened was is that she went over to him and my friend's name was Gabriel. So she was like, oh, Senor Gabriel, where is your homework? And then he was like, I don't have the homework. And he went, whoop, and banged his head on the desk. <laughs> so much.